أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today's discussion revolves around the recent interview of Sheikh Imran Hussein of Trinidad with Brother Dili Hussein of Bedford of Five Pillars. And of course, before and prior to this interview, uh, Dili did consult and do shura with ulama and consulted on what questions should be asked to a Sheikh Imran Hussein, how they should be tackled. Of course, it was a very difficult interview in terms of the temperament of the one being interviewed, temperament as well as the behavior towards the interviewer. But there are certain things that need to be pointed out with regard to the content of that particular interview. And the interview comes at a time when we have discussed previously the red heifer prophecy we have discussed the issues pertaining to the Zionist occupation of Palestine and of course in, in that regard it is very relevant. But there are certain issues that were touched upon and certain issues that were not touched upon in the interview because some of the questions that I had given Dili to ask a Sheikh Imran Hussein, they were not asked due to time constraints and of course, the questions he did ask were very pertinent, especially with regard to those issues we will cover today. As Sheikh Imran Hussein and myself have a history where I did travel to Trinidad many years ago, and I am in touch with ulama in Trinidad, the West Indies, who have had a difficult time in communicating with the Sheikh Imran Hussein, not debating, not asking for a challenge, just communicating, an exchange of ideas. Uh, years ago, I traveled to Trinidad, to his hometown, and attempted to approach him. I even contacted people who knew him personally. They contacted him, they phoned him, he refused to meet. I even went on to national TV in Trinidad and addressed the many issues that he had at that time. At that time, the issues were not as serious as they have become. And then later when Sheikh Imran Hussein visited Birmingham, I attempted to communicate with him in Birmingham. I even went to his event. But sadly, he refused to communicate and refused to engage. And therefore, the issue was dropped, even though in my book, Navigating the End of Time, I responded to many of his claims. But recently, there are many things that need to be addressed. Today, firstly, I will address a Sheikh Imran Hussein himself, whom I hope watches this particular address, and his followers, those who follow him on every aspect of his approach to eschatology. I will start with the main issue. The main issue in the entire interview was at the last point. Toward the end of the interview, the issue of the Qira'at was broached. This issue relating to the Qira'at found in Surah Al-Zukhruf, which, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions with regard to Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِسَاعَةِ this is just a segment of the entire verse. But of course, with me, I have uh, the Quran itself with the Tafsirul Jalalain, 
the tafsir of al-imam Jalaluddin al-Mahalli and Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala and with regard to the verse itself where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa innahu la ilmu lisa'ati fala tamtarunna biha which means and indeed he Isa alayhi salam La ilmul lisa'ati is a knowledge of the hour. Do not fall into any doubt with regard to that. Wattabi'oon and follow me. Hada siratu mustaqim. That is the actual verse found in uh, the 25th Jews of Al Quran Al Karim. So this was the discussion. Dili asks a Sheikh Imran with regard to his denial of the verse, meaning the word. A wording within the verse states la ilmu li sa'ati that Isa alayhi salam is a knowledge of the hour he had denied this in the past saying that the Quran was revealed without diacrits because the Quran was revealed without diacrits therefore the diacritical marks of kasra and la ilmu li sa'ati is wrong and the reasoning for this because throughout the interview people picked up upon his phrases of five rupees of intellect his phrases of peanuts for brains these type of phrases were utilized of course he is addressing the minds so today I addressed the minds and the particular mind of Sheikh Imran Hussein and the minds of his followers because it has been very difficult to engage with you in person, you have refused multiple times, I will address you here today. And because you have more than five rupees of intellect, perhaps thousands of rupees, even though the rupee is inflated, the value is not much. And clearly you do not have peanuts for brains. Today I will address you that you stated that the Qur'an was revealed without diacrits. This is correct. It is correct. And then you said the diacritic, the diacritic mark of la ilmu li sa'ati is the only one published in the mushaf. Of course this is correct. The majority of the masahif are published according to the qira'atu hafs an asim an zir bin hubaysh from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. But the Qira'at, the Masahif are published according to the ten Qira'at with the Riwayat of Al-Kubra wa Sughra with all the Turuq of all the Qurra, the well-known Qurra. These are known as the Qira'at Ashr, the ten Qira'at. Everyone knows this. If you go to Mecca Al-Mukarramah or Al-Madina Al-Munawwara, where the Masahif are published in Arabia, you can purchase the, the Mus'haf according to any one of these Qira'at. It is not, the Mus'haf, the volume of the Qur'an, is not published in one Qira'at. It is published in all the ten Qira'at, but not only the ten Qira'at. It is also published in the four additional Qira'at, in what are known as the Shawadh, the anomaly qira'at. So the qira'at of la'alamul lisa'a, la'alamul lisa'a is published because that's the narration of al-Kufiyun and it's from Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhuma. That mushaf is also published within Arabia. There is no conspiracy. Within Saudi Arabia, within the matabi', within the publishing houses within Saudi Arabia that they published the Mus'haf according to the Qira'at, the four additional Qira'at which are Shawad. They have the Qira'at of La'alamul Lisa'ati. Additionally, the Qira'at is found within the Tafasir, the commentaries of the Qur'an. So you need to be corrected with that point that the, the Masahif the mutawatir qira'at do not have la alamul lisa'a. This is correct. The ten qira'at do not have this. But the additional four shawad qira'at, they do have la alamul lisa'a. They have that particular qira'a. 
But when you mention that the diacritical marks are removed from the Mus'haf, when the Qur'an was revealed, when a sahaba al-Kiram, they wrote down the Qur'an, uh, the orthography of the Qur'an, the Qur'an was written down and preserved. But the preservation of the Qur'an relates to the Qira'at. The preservation of the Qur'an relates to how the Qur'an was passed down from chest to chest, from generation to generation. And this includes the Qira'a of the Sahaba Ridwan, like Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Ab- uh, Mas'ud radiyallahu an. The six of the ten Qira'at have been related from Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an. Six of the ten Qira'at. So this refutes even the point some people mention that Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an, he did not place the Mu'awwidatayn in the Mus'haf or Al-Fatiha in the Mus'haf. It's refuted by the fact that six of the ten Qira'at are related by Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an. But they are mutawatir. It doesn't mean only Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an relates that particular Qira'at. Now when you mentioned this to Dili, you mentioned a point, specific point. You said, if you say, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ It remains as لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ Then it entails shirk. This is how you state that it entails that Isa salam knows the Day of Judgment. And according to you, that entails shirk. Well, that would not be the correct translation of the Qur'an. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ means that he is a knowledge of the hour. What does that mean? What that means is that Sayyiduna Isa salam, his arrival, his descent, is a point of knowledge regarding the hour. لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ It doesn't mean, لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ doesn't mean Isa salam knows the hour. It doesn't translate as such. لَعِلْمُ لِسَاعَةِ means Isa salam is a point of knowledge relating to the hour, relating to a sa'a. This is something that needs to be very clear to anyone who has five rupees of intellect, as you state. That la ilmu li sa'ati doesn't translate as Isa Ali salam having the knowledge of the hour. It entails Isa Ali salam is a knowledge of the hour. That when he returns, people will know that this sign. This knowledge of the hour, you stated this is a ta'wil. It's not a ta'wil. Take the literal translation. The literal translation, la ilmu li sa'ati, would mean he is a knowledge of the hour. And this is stated very clearly by the commentators uh, of Al Quran al Karim. So, la ilmu li sa'ati, under this, they state, ta'alamu bi nuzulihi, that you know his descent, meaning with this, la ilmu li sa'ati. They even state, فَالْعِلْمُ مَجَازٌ عَمَّا يُعْلَمُ بِهِ لِلْمُبَالَغَةِ Look at this. He states in the commentary. This is the, the commentary that is published and taught up and down the madaris. What you refer to, uh, you denigrate the Darul Ulooms. But they, they publish this tafsir. And in the tafsir, they state very clearly, that this is a knowledge with regard to the descent of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam and they say وَقَرَأَ ibn Abbasin that Abdullah bin Abbas read it as لَعَلَمٌ بِفَتْحَتَيْنِ they state this very clearly that Abdullah bin Abbas read this as لَعَلَمٌ so there is no conspiracy there is no conspiracy to hide this knowledge the Mus'haf uh, the Tafsir al-Qur'an published in Hind, Bilad al-Hind, in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, in Kashmir, all those regions, even though Kashmir isn't Hind, the other Bilad al-Hind, this Mus'haf published there, it states the Qira'a of Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma. But additionally, the Mus'haf published with the Arba'a Ashratak, Qira'atan uh, of whom 
of the fo- uh, the 14 qira'a published in Arabia under the auspices of the Saudi government and in Syria and in Egypt they all mention the shad qira'a of la alamul lisa'a which is ascribed to the kufiyin so that's something essential uh, for you to note strangely enough many of the attacks that have been made against al quran al kareem have been made by orthodox christians my interlocutors the likes of jay Dayan and others have been attacking al quran al kareem so you mentioned orthodox christians now with regard to geopolitics alliances shift and change every so often in 1979 to 1989 the cia was a was an ally of the Afghan Mujahideen. That alliance shifted. Today you have Russia post the Soviet Union making different alliances with Muslims. These alliances do not change our theological positions towards different religious groupings. But you mention Orthodox Christians. Despite alliances, political alliances with some Muslims and Orthodox Christians, there are some Orthodox Christians who attempt to violate the authenticity of the Quran, attempt to criticize the, the immaculate nature of Al Quran Al Karim, that the Quran is free from being tampered in gross contradiction to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun, that indeed we revealed. A dhikr, the remembrance, meaning Al-Quran, and indeed we will preserve it. So they mention the seven ahruf. They say, look, there is a dispute amongst the, the ulama. They cannot even define the seven ahruf. This is one point they make very easily answered. Al-Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti in his book Al-Itqan fi Ulum Al-Quran mentions 40 qawl, 40 qawlan with regard to the meaning of ahruf. But a Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin, Rahimallah ta'ala, the mujaddid of the current century, he states all of this simply goes to one thing, that it only entails distinction in harf. So all those 40 aqwal, all those 40 qawl, they go down to just one difference, that the difference between the ahruf is just harf itself. So like uh, shiqwatuna in the verse, غَلَبَتْ alina shiqwatuna. It has another qira'a, غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْنَا شَقَاوَتُنَا It's just a difference in the letter. مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ Those who know the qira'at will know. It's just differences in the harf itself. So then they say, they make another attack. These interlocutors that you state you are preaching the Qur'an to them, you need to know this because there are Orthodox Christians based in the West who attempt to criticize the Quran. So they say the seven ahruf have not been preserved because when Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu an commissioned the mushaf, the masahif of the Quran and sent them out, some of the ahruf were lost. Some of the ahruf were preserved in the ten qira'at and even in the shawad qira'at, but what happened to the remaining ahruf? The, so they make an issue of this. So they say your Quran does not have integrity. The textual integrity of the Qur'an is not there. The answer is very simple. How you simply answer that is that this was a rukhsa. The ahruf themselves are just a rukhsa. They were not essential to the integrity of the Qur'an. What does that mean? That when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was informed that his ummah can recite the Qur'an according to the harf, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam, increase the harf, it was increased to three, then to five, and then to seven. Why? So the old man and the old woman and the child and the Bedouin, they all can recite the Quran more easily. This was a rukhsa, so this is an important note, that the seven ahruf were a rukhsa for the people. They were not essential for everyone to know the seven ahruf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left some of the ahruf 
in the in the riwayat of the qiraat even though there is a distinction between qira'a and ahruf meaning there's a umum wa khusus min waj they share some meaning but they depart in other meanings so here the ahruf some of them were preserved in the qiraat but some of them not being preserved does not violate the integrity of the Qur'an. Going back to this issue of la'alamu lisa'a, you also mentioned the late Dr. Muhammad Asad, who was a Jewish convert to Islam. Good writer, he wrote the book, The Road to Mecca, translated the Qur'an. He also translated Sahih al-Bukhari. He had good ties with the Saudi government and with the Pakistani government uh, he in fact helped the pakistani government to write down its constitution but you mentioned that scholars like the late muhammad asad denied the descent of isa salam because they could not find it in the quran and you say that by stating that la ilm al is not authentic which is the mutawatir qira'ah it's in ten qira'at. La ilmu lisa'a is not in one qira'a. It's in the ten mutawatir qira'at. In all ten qira'at. In all its turuq, all its pathways. In the sughra and the kubra. If someone studies the shatibiyah, the tayyibatul nashr, and the nashr, all of these texts of qira'at, they will know that it's found in all ten. And all of its pathways. La ilmu lisa'a. But you are incorrect in saying that it does not entail the descent of Isa alayhi salam because the very meaning is wa innahu la ilmu lisa'a. The very meaning is he is a knowledge of the hour, meaning his descent. But the Quran does mention the descent of Isa alayhi salam. Wa immin ahli al kitabi illa la yu'minanna bihi qabla mawtihi. There is no one from the Ahlul Kitab that except they will believe in Isa salam prior to the death of Isa salam, prior to Isa salam passing away. Go and check that verse. What does it mean? It means Isa salam will descend in Akhiru Zaman and Sayyiduna Isa salam at his hands, thousands of the Jewish people will adopt Islam. Thousands of the Jewish people. In Damascus and Jerusalem, they will accept Islam. They will enter the fold of Islam. Similarly, thousands of the Christians will enter the fold of Islam at the hands of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam. It's stated very clearly in the Quran. So both verses, wa innahu li ilmu lisa'a, is very clear regarding, and also illa la yu'minanna bihi qabla mawtihi is very clear regarding the descent of Isa alayhi salam. Aside from the hadith, the hadith on the descent of Isa alayhi salam has been narrated by 28 Sahaba with various paths of transmission. So certain scholars denying the descent of Isa alayhi salam is not based upon this qira'ah being faulty. So the diacrits, denying the diacrits on the mushaf is a denial of mutawatir qira'at. And in the past, you have been known to deny Sahih al-Bukhari, the authenticity of Sahih al-Bukhari, the authenticity of Sahih al-Imam Muslim. Of course, that's a different issue because those books are Kutub al-Tasheeh and Kutub al-I'lal. I'll give you an example. Like al-Imam, Bukhari, al-Imam Muslim in his Sahih, he has a narration that occurred in the ninth year of Hijrah, in the ninth year of migration. In that year, he mentions Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu an. When anyone who reads and studies the seerah, they will know Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu an had passed away in the fifth year of Hijri. But Al-Imam Muslim in his Sahih, he mentions a narration with Sa'ad bin Mu'adh in the ninth year of Hijri. It's a clear, ostensibly it's a clear mistake. An amateur with five rupees of intellect or peanuts in his brain, according to your terminology. If he reads that, he will say and conclude Al-Imam Muslim made a mistake, ostensibly. But if you are trained correctly at the hands of ulama, 
you kept the company of ulama and you have an adab with the ulama of the past and the ulama of the present, you will know that Imam Muslim is pointing out this illa because the next hadith and the next hadith and the next hadith do not have the mention of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh radiallahu an. He's pointing out that the first hadith is ma'lul, that phrase is ma'lul. The narrator has got the name wrong and this is a common occurrence in Bukhari and Muslim. So some amateurs in the past when they denied the authenticity of Bukhari and Muslim, they do not even realize that Al-Imam Al-Bukhari in his Sahih, sometimes he will pray, place a phrase or wording in the hadith to notify the reader that this wording, just the phrase or the word is ma'lul. It has a mistake of the narrator and then he corrects it himself within the same bab, within the same chapter or elsewhere in his Sahih. And Al-Imam Muslim does the same. In fact, Al-Imam Muslim does it within the same chapter. Al-Imam Bukhari may do it in a different chapter. So this is the methodology, the correct methodology of understanding the Quran, understanding the books of the Sunnah, not rejecting what is found in the books of the Sunnah because the authenticity of Bukhari and Muslim is an issue of ijma' that Imam al-Ashairah, Imam Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Abu al-Ma'ali, Abdul Malik al juwaini rahimallahu ta'ala, the teacher of Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, he states that if a man takes an oath that his wife is divorced, if what is in Bukhari and Muslim is not authentic, Imam Abu al-Ma'ali al juwaini states his wife is not divorced because what is in Bukhari and Muslim is authentic, he means jumlatan, la tafseelat. By way of summary, everything Bukhari and Muslim is authentic. La tafseelan. That was the position of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah all the way in the 4th century. To the extent that Imam Abu Hamid al Ghazali, when he died with Sahih al Bukhari in his chest, because he was intending to write a commentary on the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah have always accepted Bukhari and Muslim. So the Quran, how you approach your methodology, is faulty. You also mention. Fadlur Rahman al Ansari, Rahimullah, and other ulama. In fact, you even mention Allama Iqbal. Allama Iqbal, of Lahore, you say that he adopts the position of Ya'juj and Majuj. That actually is a poetry of Allama Iqbal, where he likens the hordes of the West to Ya'juj and Majuj. It's not actually a Multazim position of his, where he decisively holds that position. But that's not the issue of discussion. The issue of discussion is that you have got it wrong with regard to la ilmu lisa'a. You have made a genuine mistake. The qira'a mutawatira from the 10 mutawatir mass transmitted qira'at in the Quran, la ilmu lisa'a, the qira'a of la ilmu lisa'a doesn't contradict the descent of Isa alayhi salam. It's not the kalluf. It's we're not going out that way to give it an interpretation. It's very clear. Secondly, there has not been a conspiracy theory to hide la alamu lisa'a. La alamu lisa'a has not been hidden. <clears throat> it's found as the call of Abdullah bin Abbas in the tafasir, in the commentaries of the Quran. It's found in the shad qiraat, the masahif that are published with the shad qiraat. And therefore, from this mistake, you should retract. You are a man of knowledge. You have so many qualifications. You are a man of elderly age. You are over 80. You are old enough to be our granddad. And you do not have peanuts for brains, as you, you state. You do not have five rupees worth of intellect. Based on this, what you should do is just retract and say, I have made a mistake. The qira'a is mutawatira, I accept it as Qur'an. And then just mention la alamu is also a qira'a. It's not a big deal. If you retract, it's a big deal with Allah in terms of that you're retracting from your major mistake. You are mentioning people placing takfir. Perhaps there is shubha. Perhaps you have some vagueness with regard to qira'at and understanding the qira'at. I have removed that shubha. The qira'at at mutawatira and the Qur'an was revealed, its orthography, without diacrits. That is correct. The diacrits were placed in accordance with the ten qira'at. So therefore you must retract this. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he enables you to retract this particular mistake. And I would advise 
the sincere followers of Sheikh Imran Hussein not to follow him in this mistake. That he has made a mistake here. And by accepting the Qira'a of the Qur'an as la ilmul lisa'a, it does not violate the tenet of faith that Isa salam will descend. The descent of Isa salam is proven from this verse and it is proven from other verses of Al-Qur'an al kareem as well as the Sunnah Mutawatira, the mass transmitted hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Additionally, in your interview, you mention your position with regard to the Orthodox Christians being believers and not kuffar. And the fact that if they believe the Quran to be truthful and a revelation from Allah, then you believe that they are not kuffar and they will attain salvation. I would say this leads to an internal contradiction. That internal contradiction contradicts the sarih of the Quran. How does it contradict the sarih of the Quran, the explicit Quran? Is that the Christians, a Nasara that approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a Najran, what sect of Christianity did they belong to? You know the verses in Surah Ali Imran, when the challenge was given, the mutual cursing. Those Christians were Eastern Orthodox Christians. They were Christians that resided in Arabia. They had their allegiance to the Christians in the East that were based in Jerusalem. What Christians were they that Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an conquered in Jerusalem. I want Sheikh Imran Hussein to utilize his magnificent mind and as he claims because from his interview it seems that you deem all the other ulama thinkers as inferior to you and I want his listeners, his followers to, to know that the Eastern Orthodox, they were ruling Jerusalem in the time of Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. In fact, the Eastern Orthodox were ruling Damascus. Of course, there, there is something else to be said with regard to the split of the churches that occurred before the Crusades. So the split between the Catholic Church based in Rome and the Eastern Orthodox Church based in modern day Turkey in in Constantinople, that was a split that occurred later. There is much to be extracted from that, a lot to be understood from the implications of that. But Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu, he conquered Eastern Orthodox Christians. The common sense question is, why did Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu deal with those Eastern Orthodox Christians as kuffar, as non-believers, as Ahlul Kitab, Ahlul Dhimma? They were treated, treated as Ahlul Dhimma. There is one point I would want to say. That is the fuqaha they do mention in their books. That the term kafir, if it comes as an offensive term for the Ahlul Dhimma, then you do not utilize the term in the sense that you criticize them for being kuffar. You refer to them as Ahlul Dhimma. Perhaps that confusion <clears throat> entered your mind and you could not make the distinction. Perhaps you want to say that the Ahlul Dhimma, we should not refer to them as Kuffar because they find the term offensive. We should refer to them as Ahlul Dhimma and Ahlul Kitab. Perhaps you meant that. But when Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu anhu, he conquered Jerusalem, he imposed the jizya upon them. And the jizya is only placed on non-Muslims. He gave them their rights. Their churches were left intact. But there were certain impositions placed upon him, uh, upon the Christians, which are known as the Shurut Umariya, the conditions of Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. I want you to consider also that when Khalid bin al-Walid radiallahu an, he conquered Damascus, Abu Ubaidah bin al-Jarrah radiallahu an, another great warrior of al-Islam, they entered Damascus. Half of the Sahaba entered from the eastern direction and others entered from the western direction. When they entered the city of Damascus, 
they entered a church. Half of that church was conquered by force. The other half was conquered without force. That church became known as Al Jami Al Umawi. The Grand Umayyad Masjid later it became known as Al Jami Al Umawi. But it be, half of the church became a masjid. All the Sahaba agreed to make the half the church into a masjid because the church was conquered by force. But where the Christians agreed, that half was left as a church. So the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, they converted half of the Grand Umayyad Masjid. That was a church before, and prior to being a church, it was the temple of Saturn in the time of the Romans, prior to the Romans adopting Christianity. So those were Eastern Orthodox Christians. That is how the Sahaba Ali Muridwan conquered two cities, not only two, there was Alexandria. Three of the main Christian Eastern Orthodox cities were conquered in the time of the Sahaba Ali Muridwan. How can you deny this historical fact? And it will bring me later to a Sultan Muhammad al Fatih who you criticized. But Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, he imposed the Shurut Umariya in Jerusalem and then half the Grand Umayyad Masjid was made into a church. The other half uh, uh, into a masjid, the other half was left as a church. Later the Banu Umayyah purchased the church and they converted the entire building into a masjid which is the Grand Umayyad Masjid which has been ruled by Muslims for 1400 years. You are a supporter of Bashar al-Assad. Bashar al-Assad is the current president of Syria in Damascus. Why do you not then demand Bashar al-Assad to turn the Grand Umayyad Masjid into a church? Even Bashar al-Assad will not accept that. Why? Because over 1300 years, well over 1300 years, the Grand Umayyad Masjid has been a masjid. It's a Muslim site. But it was taken from the Eastern Orthodox Christians. Similarly in Alexandria. Similarly in Jerusalem. But because Jerusalem was conquered through peace, the Muslims did not forcefully convert the churches into masajid. So, what you mentioned with regard to the Orthodox Christians, the question to you is, how did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deal with the Eastern Orthodox Christians in his lifetime when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ad addressed the Eastern Orthodox Christians and debated the Christians of Najran. Similarly, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, how he dealt with the Christians in Jerusalem, Eastern Orthodox Christians. Similarly, Sayyiduna Khalid bin al-Walid and Abu Ubaidah bin al-Jarrah in Damascus. Similarly, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an, the conqueror of Egypt under Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, how he conquered Egypt and how he dealt with the Christian Copts in Egypt, that the entire history contradicts your theory. Additional to that, Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu an, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khalifa for 20 years. S Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu an governed the Islamic Caliphate for 20 years. And during that time, companions who were greater than Mu'awiyah radiallahu an, they joined the army of Mu'awiyah radiallahu an in order to conquer the city of Constantinople. So the host of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who hosted Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered al Madina al Munawwarah, he descended into the house of a Sahabi known as Abu Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu an. The house of Abu Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu an, the location is when you come out after giving salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards the right hand side, the Uthmaniyun, the Ottomans that you criticized, the Uthmaniyun, Allah have mercy on them, rahimahumullah, 
they would place a masjid or a library on every historical site. So where Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, where he resided when he was in Al-Madina, Al-Munawwarah, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, where he resided, they built a masjid. That masjid is still there. It's known as Masjid Al-Imam Al-Bukhari. When he was 18 years old, he wrote At-Tariq Al-Kabir under the moonlight in Ar-Rawdatu Sharifa, under the moonlight of Al-Madina, Al-Munawwarah, at the age of 18. They preserved that site. Similarly, the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiallahu an, they placed a library. That library was known as the library of Arif Hikmat. It had many manuscripts. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa settled in that house. The hadith of the conquering of Constantinople is a hadith related by that same Sahabi. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an. So Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the Sahabi, he didn't understand the hadith the way you have understood. He joined the army of Muawiyah radiallahu an, and he attempted to conquer the citadel, the Eastern Orthodox citadel in Constantinople, in what they refer to as Istanbul today. Of course, the, the name is Constantinople, the Ottomans, they renamed it as Islambul, Islambul, and they would refer to it as Astana. So, when Sayyiduna Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an, he joined the army of Muawi radiallahu an, he was martyred in those campaigns, or he died during those campaigns, and then they buried him. Dozens of Sahaba Ali Muridwan, dozens of Sahaba Ali Muridwan, died in those com- campaigns and were buried near the citadels, su- the citadel surrounding Constantinople. So the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, they intended to conquer the city of Constantinople. So your position uh, regarding la ilmu lisa'a not only contradicts the Quran, it contradicts the mutawatir qira'at which the Sahaba agreed upon, your, your position on the Eastern Orthodox Christians not only contradicts the Qur'an, because your methodology is, and correctly so, that you start from the Qur'an. But your me- very methodology is contradicting Al-Qur'an al kareem That when the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, when they conquered uh, all these cities, they imposed the jizya on the Eastern Orthodox Christians. And similarly, when Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiallahu an, he joined the army of Muawiyah radiallahu an, he understood the hadith of the conquering of Constantinople better than me and you. So many of the Sahaba Ali Ridwan, they attempted to conquer the city of Constantinople. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not written that down except for a Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih rahimahullah ta'ala, whom you curse and disparage even though he was around in the time of the likes of Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimallah ta'ala, one of the greatest scholars of ilm post as Salaf al-Salihun, in the time of Imam Badruddin al-Aini rahimallah ta'ala, in the time of the likes of Imam al-Qastalani rahimallah ta'ala, and then after his time you have great ulama like Jalaluddin al-Suyuti, uh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Zakaria al-Ansari, Al-Imam Abdul Wahab al-Sha'rani, all these great a'imma, they accepted a Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih. Now, your, some of your followers may not understand these nuances and not be familiar with these type of facts. But in reality, you are misinforming them with regard to a Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih, rahimahullah ta'ala, as well as the history surrounding his conquering of the city of Constantinople. I would want to move on to another issue. That issue is with regard to the ayah in the Quran relating to in Surah Al Anbiya. In Surah Al Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Qariya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Qariya. Qariya is a town. And you said 
that Qarya refers to Jerusalem. And when the people will return back to Jerusalem, who you, by whom you mean the Jewish people, then that would entail the Ya'juj and Ma'juj being identified. That verse is in Surah Al-Anbiya. I have Surah Al-Anbiya opened up in front of me where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا It's haram prohibited on a town that we have destroyed. أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ They will not return back. Hatta until the point فُتِحَتْ And there's two qiraat again. Like for instance, the majority of them uh, recited as Futihat and then Amir Ibn Amir he, refi- he recites it as Futihat this is a point for you to to do ta'aqul understand this <clears throat> in order that we do not have five rupee intellect in order that we do not have peanuts for brains using your phrases let's utilize our brains that there are two qiraat, the majority of them read it as Futihat. Ibn Amir recited it as Futihat. There's no conspiracy in hiding the tashkil. If you open your Mus'haf now, Ya Sheikh Imran, you open your Mus'haf, you won't find Futihat. It's written Futihat. It doesn't mean there's a conspiracy to hide, hide Futihat. It just means that when you studied all those years ago in the 1970s, you did not study the ten qiraat. In your madrasa, they didn't teach you ashatibiyya. They did not teach you tayyibatun nashr. They didn't send you to the qurra. They didn't send you to, when you went to al-azhar, you didn't study the qiraat. There's no conspiracy in hiding the qiraat. So, the verse states, Futihat ya'juju wa ma'juju. That it's prohibited upon any town that we have destroyed, any town, Qaryatin, that they will not return back to earth. I'll tell you why I state this shortly. Until Hatta Futihat is opened, meaning the, the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is open. Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. The, barrier is, the word barrier is not in there, so let's go literal. Literally, it states Futihat Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ And they will, they will, Hadab is a slope, they will come down, Yansilun, they will rush down every slope. وَاقْتَرَبَ الْوَعْدُ الْحَقُّ And then the truthful promise has arrived. فَإِذَا هِيَ شَاخِصَةٌ أَبْصَارُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا So then it mentions the, the sight of those who disbelieve, meaning on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They will say, يَا وَيْلَنَا قَدْ كُنَّا فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا بَلْ كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ So the, the kuffar will exclaim, exclaim things. What does this verse mean? You state that Qarya entails Jerusalem. But I will address you and your followers. There's a few factors to take into account. Firstly, Surah Al-Anbiya, anyone who is listening to this, Open up your Mus'haf and read Surah Al-Anbiya. We recite Al-Quran Al-Kareem on a daily basis. As Muslims we know, every Surah has a theme. The theme of Surah Al-Anbiya is destroyed towns. There are multiple towns that were destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then dis- mentioning those towns states, وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ it is haram upon any town that is destroyed, that they return back to that town, meaning resurrection, until the signs of the Yawm Al-Qiyamah come about, which is one of the signs is the opening of the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And then on the Day of Judgment, the disbelievers shall exclaim. But you state that the proof for Qarya, meaning Jerusalem, is the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. There is a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah regarding Sayyiduna Uzair alayhi salam. Sayyiduna Uzair alayhi salam is related, it's mentioned, O kalladhi marra ala qaryatin, 
وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِيهَا Huzair alayhi salam, he passes by a town. أو كَلَّذِي Like the one, مَرَّ عَلَى قَرْيَةٍ Like the one who passed by a town. وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِيهَا The town has fallen down on its foundations. This word qarya, you say that explains this qarya. When in reality, there is no mention of the qarya being Jerusalem. It's commentators. So it's you who has gone away from the muhkam al-Quran. Because you state to uh, Brother Dili Hussein, you say there is muhkam of the Quran. You always go back to the muhkam of the Quran. You have not utilized the muhkam of the Quran. That story of Uzair Ali Salam, they even differ which town is it. So the translation would be like the one who passed by a town. The very translation is, or, or the one who, or like the one who has passed by a town. And the town was destroyed on its foundations. And this verse would also translate as, وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ It is haram upon a qarya, a town, that we have destroyed, that they return back. Meaning they, the people who are destroyed will never return back. And that is the theme of Surah Al-Anbiya. But you attempt to go one step ahead. You want to identify Western civilization as Ya'juj and Ma'juj, which in fact is a Christian, Russian uh, conspiracy theory. Not only Russian, middle class white Christians in the 1800s, they identified Russians as Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And some of them identified Western Europe as Ya'juj and Ma'juj. You have simply taken that theory and attempted to superimpose that on the Quran. What implications does that have? The implications are very important today for Gaza. The implications mean that Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not defeated. So you are a defeatist. Sheikh Imran Hussein, you are, you are a defeatist because you are saying that today's war in Gaza is against people who cannot be defeated until Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam returns. That contradicts the Quran. That contradicts the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We as Sunni Muslims, we believe that the occupation will be defeated. Occupation forces will be defeated by saying that Western civilization is Ya'juj and Ma'juj, that the United States are Ya'juj and Ma'juj, you have been clearly contradicted in Afghanistan where the helicopters left like they left Vietnam in 1975. The helicopters left the way they left in 1975. The Vietnam War lasted for 20 years and, and the United States of America was defeated. The United States of America was defeated in Somalia. The United States of America was defeated in Afghanistan by people wearing sandals, by people who live a simple lifestyle. The United States of America has been defeated on many fronts and will continue to be defeated. Like old empires, like the British Empire was defeated in Afghanistan. Read our history, Sheikh Imran Hussein, read history. You said the people of this island do not know British history. That is incorrect. I have read the entire history of Britain. Simon Sharma's three volumes is a Zionist. His three volumes on the history of Britain, I read it cover to cover. I've read many books on the history of Britain. Britain has been defeated multiple times. Western civilization has been defeated. The Algerian uprising in Fr uh, against France, the French were defeated. The uprising in Syria, led by Imam Badruddin al-Hassani, rahimahullah ta'ala. The French were booted out of Syria by Imam Badruddin al-Hassani. Western civilization is not Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Western civilization has been defeated multiple times in the past. But by implication, by you saying Western civilization is Ya'juj and Ma'juj, you are saying Benjamin Netanyahu is supported by uh, Ya'juj and Ma'juj and therefore cannot be defeated. Your attitude is defeatist. And this is the, the crux of the matter that 
Instead of standing up for tyranny, as you claim, you in fact are not standing up for tyranny. So you have misinterpreted this verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ It means a town. And the verse, أَوْ كَالَّذِي مَرَّ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ is a town. Some commentators speculated that town may be Jerusalem, the other verse, the one in Surah Al-Baqarah. So, there are other implications. You claim that the current Jewish people will be returned back to Jerusalem based on this by Ya'juj and Ma'juj. By implication, you are saying the likes of Benjamin Netanyahu are actually a Semitic people. They are not Semitic. Benjamin Netanyahu is not Semitic. His forefathers are not Semitic. In fact, the majority of the IDF are not Semitic. Yes, within the population of the garrison fort known as Israel today, an illegal occupation, there are Semitic Jews. Those are the Bani Israel. But many of the Bani Israel, they adopted Islam, who are known as the Palestinians. In fact, many of the Palestinians have the correct genetic of Bani Israel. Some of the Jewish people do also. But these Ashkenazi Jews are in fact, genetically speaking, not Semitic. They adopted Judaism. Like so many American occupiers today, they go to Jerusalem, they adopt Judaism, but they are not genetically from the Middle East. Genetically, they are European. So the implications of your claim are totally wrong. Now, I would want to mention a few other points that you covered and then we would open up inshallah for questions and answers with regard to what you state uh, regarding Syria the Muslims in China and Muslims as minorities in other regions your major mistake in this is not identifying a major problem that major problem is that the nation-state model that has been superimposed in those countries, the effects of that nation-state model, the nation-state model which came about in the time of the French Revolution in the late 1700s and then adopted by Napoleon and other colonizers, that model has been replicated across the globe. So, vul, oppression of not only Muslims. We look at South America and the history of vul in South America alone, in various South American states. The model of vul is replicated wherever the state model is superimposed. So, even Muslim nation states, they carry out vul. There are many Muslim nation states today that carry out dhulm. You only need to know what various nations have done, what secular Turkey has done to Kurds, what Pakistan has done in Bangladesh, or even General Zia did with the Palestinians, or what Pakistan does in various other parts of the world, or other nation states, or Bashar al-Assad, his dhulm on the Syrians or what is occurring today in Libya and those various armies that are stationed in Libya. So the nation state model, whether it is China, whether it is Russia, whether it is the Muslims, the Muslim majority nation states, whether it is in Europe, whether it is in North America, that nation state model replicates vulm and oppression. So it is essential on Muslims to call back for the Khilafah. That the Khilafah must return in order to remove the dhulm. So your mistake with regard to taking sides where dhulm is occurred is found in the fact that you are not pinpointing that the dhulm is in the model of not only the democratic model, because remember, Hitler was elected by, through elections. Mussolini was a result of democracy. The volume carried out by Winston Churchill on 
ethnic groups across the British Empire. He was elected through elections, democracy. So your lack of identifying the problem by taking sides, you cannot take sides in this day and age. In this day and age, there is not any Sultan al-Adil. Many of them have, fall, have blood on their hands. They carry out oppression. Therefore, that is your major mistake by taking sides in any oppression. While the correct position of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is pointing at Dhul of the Zalim when people are able to do so. Otherwise, safeguarding Muslims wherever possible. Safeguarding Muslims to the point that no further blood is shed. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to reflect upon those things that were mentioned. And inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you retract especially from the positions of kufr, which was regarding your position on the qiraat. This doesn't mean I'm making takfir of you. It means that the position itself is kufr regarding the Qiraat and regarding the Orthodox Christians. And insha'Allah ta'ala we will now open up uh, for questions and answers. So some of the uh, admin, if they have any uh, questions to, play, uh, to forward to me, insha'Allah we will look at some of the questions. So one brother asked, you should please comment on the hadith in Kitab al fitr about the catastrophe. So one brother asked a question with regard to a hadith in Kitab al fitan regarding the catastrophe. Did he mention the wording in Arabic? So there are a few hadith. Uh, one hadith in, remember the book al fitan of Nu'aym bin Hamad. He's a shaykh, one of the shaykhs of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. But the book contains weak hadith, there's no doubt. So some of the critics critiqued my book, Navigating the End of Time. Unlike Sheikh Imran Hussein, I listen to critics, I take up their criticism, I review, I look. Yes, there are hadith that are weak in Al-Fitan Abnu Aim bin Hamad, no doubt. But sometimes a weak hadith can become uh, Hassan li ghayrihi. So some hadith, they are weak individually, but they can become Hassan li ghayri. And similarly, there, uh, the, the hadith in Nu'aym bin Hamad al-Fitan, some of them have been utilized by the ulama. So that particular hadith you refer to refers to some fitan that will occur in the month of Ramadan. It mentions that uh, uh, the catastrophe is regarding a fire that will occur in the east. Because you have not mentioned the exact Arabic word, I cannot pinpoint the exact hadith you mean, but as far as I know, it's the hadith of the column of fire in the east. That will happen in the time of the Sufyani. It happens for one year in the month of Ramadan. It's not now, so you cannot misunderstand those hadith. Please comment. Uh, uh, so there is another one. Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu an changed the Quran. This is the question. That would be incorrect. Say, to say Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an changed the Quran, that would be totally incorrect. It would be kufr. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an preserved the orthography of the Quran. What was the difference between his official compilation and the previous compilation? All he did was he made it official that everyone must copy from this volume. They cannot rewrite according to their own orthography. To simplify that for you, for instance, in American English and British English, you have different spelling for certain words. Certain people, when they were writing down their own, their own private copies of the Quran, they were miswriting, misspelling words in the Quran. Sayyidina Uthman commissioned an official copy that the orthography must be copied by every Muslim in every town according to the orthography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how the Qur'an was revealed upon him. How was this different to the compilation of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq? Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, did not impose that on the people. There was only a 12-year difference uh, 
between the two. Someone is asking a question which is, they ask, uh, will the Mahdi come from the UK? The answer is no. Uh, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, radiallahu an, he will be from al Madina al munawwarah So someone asks, in India, must take a single uh, platform for all Muslim groups to unite on, on the political front against oppression. Yes, that would be permitted. If you unite against oppression, that would be permissible. Someone asked a question, others have refuted Imran Hussein before and mentioned the kufr of his positions before, but he did not change. At which point will the ulama, if ever, make specific takfir of him? That would be done by a Darul Ifta, a responsible mufti, who would have to contact him. There is a process of doing takfir on an individual. Before you uh, declare someone a fasiq or a kafir, there is a due process. But it's essential on people to point out that the position is kufr, to warn the people. Someone asks, instead of saying uh, kafirs would be better to say non-Muslims, since most people have not learned about Islam in the correct way. So in, in that sense, they would not be considered kafirs. This is something I mentioned in the live, that perhaps he's mistaking uh, using the term non-Muslim with uh, kafir not to offend. That's an issue of fiqh. But in the Quran they are referred to as uh, kuffar. Someone asks, what is Shaykh Israr Rashid's view on Ya'jud and Ma'jud? Will they come out after Isa al -Islam? The answer is yes. I have covered this in detail in my book, uh, Navigating the End of Time, uh, that Ya'juj and Ma'juj the hordes of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, how they are relative to that time. I've covered that in detail elsewhere. Which land would the Dajjal first appear? There is a question. Which land would the Dajjal first appear? The answer is, a Dajjal will first appear in Khurasan, but he would not be famous. Then he would go to Asfahan. He'll gain a following in Asfahan. 70,000 Jews wearing blue shawls. Then he shall march into Basra and other cities, but he shall become an international figure when he reaches the border of Syria and Iraq. But remember, he appears post-apocalypse, post-Malhama, Al-Malhamatul Kubra. Post-Al-Malhamatul Kubra is a different world to the world we have now. The world will be totally different. There will be famines, there will be droughts, people will have weak iman. That's a different time and place. You quote the hadith of three kings will fight for a single throne. Uh, that hadith actually states that three children of three children of one Khalifa shall fight over gold. Abu al Fida Ismail bin Kathir, he mentions that this is. A people who will fight of the gold, it's disputed. Is it the gold of the Euphrates or is it the gold of the Kaaba? They actually defute, uh, dispute that. Which gold is it? But this happens before uh, Al Imam al Mahdi. An. If takfir has not come from ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, please do not follow until clear guidance from ulama. Yes, <clears throat> but we warn regarding the kufr positions that the positions are kufr. Sheikh, in North America, is the correct Qibla northeast or southeast? The correct position is northeast. And this, was, this fatwa was given by many ulama in the past. A brother asks, is Jerusalem the town mentioned in the Quran about Gog and Magog? I've covered that in the live stream, that that town is, in general, it's not very specific. In your view, what is the best country to live in right now as a Sunni Muslim? Uh, the country of your birth is always the best country to live in. That's my opinion. 
but there will always be a preferability of Al Madina Al Munawwara and Makkah Al Mukarrama. These are two great cities to live in. Jerusalem is a great city to live in because it's a city of Ribat, and Damascus is a great city to live in. Istanbul is a great city to live in. Cairo is a great city to live in. These are my favorite cities. And of course, Birmingham is a great city to live in. So, Sheikh, why do people reject the conquering of Constantinople as fulfilling the prophecy? Because they conf confuse the two prophecies. There is one which mentions Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, he will actually be the one who conquers Constantinople. That is a different prophecy. In the Qiraat, so if your question doesn't get answered, keep typing so we can uh, catch your question, inshallah. In the Hanafi school, is it allowed to wear perfume which has denatured, denatured alcohol? The answer is yes, denatured alcohol is permitted. Do you believe that Egypt will be sanctioned in the future as in the Hadith states Iraq, Syria are right now? Yes, the Hadith mentions three places. One of those places is Iraq in Sahih Muslim and it mentions Asham. Asham is under sanction now meaning the whole of Sham, Syria, as well as Lebanon, as well as Palestine, all of this is a Sham, and Gaza, and the pass, the Rafa crossing, all of this links to Egypt. There will be sanctions on Egypt according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Isa alayhi salam descends and people turn to Islam, will the doors of repentance be closed? The answer is, the door of repentance are closed once the sun rises from the west. When that happens, then the door of repentance is closed. What is your suggestion where common Muslims should live in times of fitan? I suggest that you buy farmhouses, you live in the country, uh, you study your Quran, your Sunnah in, in the country areas and you grow your own food. Shaykh, can I pray combining uh, two madhabs? Ibn Abidin in Raddul Muhtar has covered this. It's not the time to, men uh, to mention that in detail. Go back to the Hashi of Ibn Abidin. He mentions with regard to combination of prayers. According to the Hanafi school, are the Ottomans regarded as Khalifa, as a Caliphate? The answer is a Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nablusi, rahimallahu ta'ala, he wrote on this. Al Imam Ahmad Ridha Khan, rahimallahu ta'ala, in volume 14 of the Lahore edition of Fatawa Ridawiya, also gives his view. But it seems Al Imam Ahmad Ridha Khan was unfamiliar of the work of Al Imam Abdul Ghani and Nablusi, rahimallah. So I would refer you to my book. Navigating the end of time where I make reference to the work of a Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nablusi rahimallahu ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do not divide yourself into sects and we call ourselves Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, then we are going to uh, going against the hadith. Actually the Quran says, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Grasp onto the rope of Allah and do not divide. We do not divide, others divide. So the Qadiyaniya, by claiming Mirza Ghulam is a Nabi, they divide the Muslims. Then, by people insulting the Shaykhain Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar al Farooq, they divide the Muslims. Other groups, by declaring the Sunnis as being Mushriks, they divide the Muslims. The Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah follow the Quran. The Quran says, Wa bihabli Allah. We hold on to the Quran and Sunnah, while the other sects they attempt to divide us.
Someone asks, what's your opinion of the Pakistani ulama who keep fighting each other? Ahlu Makkata adra bima fiha. People of Mecca know better what's in Mecca. Ahlu Pakistan adra bima fiha. The people of Pakistan will know better with regard to Pakistan. So you take that issue to the ulama of Pakistan. Sheikh, do you concede that the interpretation of the town of Jerusalem is one possible interpretation and a valid one? The answer is no, because Jerusalem has its own unique prophecies. Jerusalem actually has its own unique prophecies. And those prophecies, one of them that's mentioned is that a Dajjal will not enter the city of Jerusalem. So someone asks, will a Dajjal enter the city of Jerusalem? The answer is he will be unable to enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So the, what is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa? Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is the haram complex. Uh, Salahuddin Al-Ayubi, rahimullah, he gave it the name of Al-Haram Al-Sharif. But the, the Al-Aqsa complex is the entire Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And he will be unable to enter, according to the hadith. Someone asks, is Taliban the, the army of the Mahdi? The answer is you will only know when Al-Imam Al-Mahdi appears. You cannot, there is a rule. There is a rule with regard to prophecies that you do not attempt to interpret them until they actually come about. Someone asks, I'm a revert with no knowledge of Arabic. Uh, can I attend your durus? The answer is yes, you can come to SBC. We have people here who will instruct you and teach you in Arabic, insha'Allah ta'ala. Why we do not do online durus is because people should have qadr, value, ilm, and to attend the knowledge. If you say you do not, you are unable to attend because you live far, the answer is that you always have ulama in your city. Do not denigrate the ulama of your own hometown. This is a problem. There, there are many people from India and Pakistan who say they want to study with me. Your own country of India has multiple great ulama. Your own country of Pakistan has great ulama and great places of learning. Jami'a Sharafiya is in India. Uh, the Jami'a Nidhamiya is in India. These are great places of learning. In Pakistan, you have Jami'a Nidhamiya in Lahore. Go there and learn. You have in uh, KPK, you have Mufti Fadl Subhan, Hafizahullah. You have many great ulama. So go to them and study. Uh, people takfir you and I defend you. Uh, is this encouraged in Islam or not, Sheikh? People who do takfir of me, they can meet me. I'm at SBC. Come and do takfir on my face and justify your takfir. And I will count you with ilm and knowledge, insha'Allah ta'ala, and uh, demonstrate to you that your takfir is invalid. Unlike a Sheikh Imran Hussain, I do not lose my temper. I do not, uh, I attempt not to insult you. I will answer, insha'Allah ta'ala, with knowledge. Where would you recommend studying Qiraat in the UK? In Birmingham, we have a Sheikh Nadi. Uh, he has his center here on Warwick Road. We have Darul Qurra of Abu Adam. These are the two places. A Sheikh, in your book, Intellectual Intifada, you mention regarding marketplaces near mosque by Khalifa. But what would be the system in terms of a commerce or modern day markets? The answer is that the, the way of dealing with this uh, would be in accordance with the Islamic contracts, Islamic finance. Someone asks regarding the hadith of Bilal bin al-Harith radiyallahu an going to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is this hadith authentic? The answer is yes. No Salafi in the entire UK has today debated me on this hadith. They cannot prove it's weak. In fact, the hadith is authentic. Nasiruddin al-Albani, he attempted to weaken the hadith by mentioning that Malik al-Dar is weak. This is false. Malik al-Dar, the, 
the Muhadrami is known. He is found in Al Isaba of Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, rahimullah. He was the Khazin, the treasurer for Sayyiduna Umar. Radiyallahu an. And Al A'mash is also authentic. He tries weakening Al A'mash. The hadith is authenticated by Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in Fathul Bari. And Sheikh Muhammad Awama, Hafizahullah, he in his ta'aliq and the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, he counters all these points. So the hadith is authentic. Can we do istighatha and tawassul through Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam? The answer is that when Isa alayhi salam descends, the hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad mentions that they, the Muslims, when he appears, when Isa alayhi salam appears, they will seek his help at that time. Why do Muslims not do it now? Because we go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We do not need to go to uh, do tawassul and istighatha through other anbiya because we have khatum al nabiyyin Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also the shubha of resembling the Christians. Sheikh, is the Jal alive in the world now? The answer is yes. And he is moved from place to place. He's moved from place to place. Sheikh, if a person says, I worship Jesus and claims to be a Muslim, do we need to wait for a fatwa of takfir? The answer is no. That's called iltizam al-kufar. The reason why I said with Imran Hussein, there is a shubha, so you can understand this, is because with qira'at, with qira'at, the, most people do not know the depth of qira'at. And it's quite obvious that the Sheikh Imran Hussein has not studied Qiraat. And similarly, with regard to referring to the Christians as Kafir, he is perhaps avoiding calling them Kafir, to, not to insult them. He perhaps has got that confused. That is why I restrain from calling him a Kafir. Sheikh, what is your view on Salik bin Sidina? Rahimullah, he was an alim from the Maliki school. He lived in Syria, uh, in uh, the United States, and he passed away, Allah have mercy on his soul. He was a student of Sheikh Murabit al-Hajj. What is the position in the Hanafi school on having a full beard? The answer is that Mufti Waqaruddin rightly states, it's a sunnah qareeb al-wajib. It's isa'a to trim your beard lower than qubda. So if you look, my beard is qubda. Here, yeah, look. It may look shorter than a qubda on camera or sometimes because I have a curly beard. But when you stretch it out, alhamdulillah, it is actually a qubda. So it's, it's sunnah qareeb al-wajib in the Hanafi school. This is the position of a Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin as cited by a Sheikh Nuruddin Itr. And uh, I can discuss this with people face to face if they ever bring the issue up. Inshallah, we will stop here. A uh, quick reminder. We will be having a live on Zakat, quick questions and answers. Insha'Allah Ta'ala on Thursday night, 10 p.m. So on that note, th I will see everyone Thursday night, 10 p.m. on Zakat, live questions and answers. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li, wa lakum wa atubu ilayhi, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.